Hello, I'm Ashley and welcome to Crypto Christie's. Are you confused about what 66% and 50% possible HET means? Well, you are in luck. Watch through this whole video and afterwards, you're going to feel like a pro. Okay, if you saw my last video about how to make a visual exanthic lily white, I mentioned I would create a video explaining possible hets. If you did not see that video yet about lily white exanthics, be sure to check it out uh, somewhere up here. It's going to pop up up there somewhere. There will also be a link in the description below this video. So that video goes over some basic genetics in addition to lily white and exanthic genetics. So it's a good one to watch if you missed it. Okay. So on to today's video, possible heads. What does possible head even mean? Let's continue using the example of exanthics. And even though I'm using the example of the exanthic gene here, the following applies to any recessive genes. And I'll quickly review some basics here. The exanthic trait is recessive, which means you have to have two copies of the exanthic allele, one from each parent, in order to create a visual. So a visual is what is called homozygous for exanthic, meaning it has two copies of the exanthic allele. A gecko that only has one copy of the exanthic allele is not a visual exanthic, but it is heterozygous for exanthic. In the reptile community, this would be labeled as a 100% het, het being short for heterozygous. So in this example, you have one visual exanthic, and one that is normal and does not carry the exanthic gene at all. When you pair these two geckos, none of them will be a visual exanthic because the offspring has to receive an exanthic allele from both parents in order to be a visual. So even though none of these geckos are visuals, all of them will be 100% head exanthic because the father in this example is homozygous for exanthic. He has to donate one of these alleles. And since they are both exanthic alleles, an exanthic allele will always, always be donated. So that is how you get 100% head exanthic. This is not considered a possible. It is a definite, unless there's some kind of weird mutation that occurs that we know nothing about, uh, which is highly unlikely, but not, not impossible. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's look at these two geckos. Both are 100% head exanthics, and these are the offspring that came out of this pairing. Aside from the visual that was produced, do you know which ones are 100% head exanthic? Are they all? Are any? Unfortunately, there is no way to know just by looking at them. All of them could be heads. Some of them could be heads, or none of them. It just depends on how the genes were passed on. Regardless, all three are considered possible heads. And not only that, but they are what is called a 66% possible het. Now, let's see why that is. With Punnett squares, we can come up with probabilities. It doesn't guarantee anything, but we can see what our odds are. So if we look at this Punnett square, we see that one visual is produced, two hets are produced, and one normal. Will this always happen this way? No. Absolutely not. But this helps us see how it may occur based on the numbers. So at first you're like, so wouldn't that be a 50% chance, two out of four? Well, no. Since we already know the visual obviously carries the exanthic gene, then that one is completely taken out of the equation when figuring out possible heads. So that leaves us with three geckos of which we are unsure of. Out of those three, the odds are that two will be het for exanthic. Two out of three is roughly 66%. So all three of these geckos are 66% possible het for exanthic. So this just means you have a 66% chance of having a gecko that received the exanthic allele from one of the parents. A gecko in reality is either het for exanthic or it's not. So the 66% does not mean it has 66% of the gene in it. So how do we find out which of these geckos actually truly received the gene and is 100% het without a doubt? Well, you would have to prove it out. The only way to prove it out is to breed to another gecko that also carries the exanthic gene 
and creates a visual exanthic. If you pair this gecko with another gecko and a visual exanthic hatches, then this gecko that was once a 66% head exanthic can now be labeled as 100% head exanthic. Okay, so that's 66%. So what does 50% possible head exanthic mean? Just like the 66%, it means you have a 50% chance of having a gecko that received the exanthic gene from one of the parents. It either has the gene or it doesn't. So let's look at how this works. If you pair 100% head exanthic with a normal gecko that does not carry the exanthic allele, you will produce 50% possible head exanthics. Once again, you cannot tell which ones are head exanthic just by looking at them. So they are all considered 50% possible heads. So let's bring out the Punnett square again and look at the odds. So you see here with these two geckos, one that is 100% head exanthic and one that is a normal, you will produce two normals that do not carry the exanthic gene at all and two that are 100% head for exanthic. So in this case, since no visuals are produced and all four geckos are in question, the odds are that two out of four will carry the gene. Therefore, with each gecko, there is a 50% chance they receive the exanthic gene. Once again, the only way to know is to prove them out. So let's do that with all four geckos and see what we produce. Just for simplicity, I'm going to pair all four to a visual exanthic. These are the offspring. Hmm. It looks like only one produced a visual exanthic. Based on the chart, we were hoping that two of the four would produce a visual. So in this case, right now, we can only say that gecko number four is 100% head exanthic. I just wanted to show that 50% does not always mean two out of four will be head for exanthic. 50% are your odds, but even when the odds are in your favor, you may not get what you're hoping for. For example, if someone is doing a raffle and there are only 20 entries and you buy 19 of those entries, the odds are definitely in your favor. But that one person that bought the 20th entry, <laughs> they may still be the winner, as annoying as that is. With that said, this was only the first four eggs from each pairing. As the season goes on, look at what later hatched from geckos one, two, and three. They all created visuals. They all ended up being 100% heads. Congratulations, we just beat the odds. Okay, so just to sum it up, if you pair 200% heads, they will produce visuals and 66% possible heads. 100% head paired with a normal will produce 50% possible heads only, no visuals. So based on all that we just went over, 50% and 66% are just your odds. But in the end, it, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. A gecko either is or isn't het for exanthic. It does make people feel better, however, when buying a gecko that they are hoping is 100% het. Like, to say that it's a 66% het, they feel like they have better odds. It's just like when you enter a raffle with low entries. The odds are in your favor, but there are no guarantees unless you have a proven 100% het. But hey, some people are willing to gamble, and I totally get that, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I hope that helped clear up some confusion. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and YouTube thinks that you'll like this video next, or you can check out this one here. Thanks for watching!